I have to tell you, if we can get Mike Wilner on our screen, the longtime host of Jays Talk, voice of the Blue Jays, now columnist, podcaster with the Toronto Star. Mike, it is an honor. Jays fan here, Jays super fan there. Hasn't missed a game, Kelly Rempel. And, and Mike, this would not shock you out here in Western Canada because you've been with a club for so long how much the love for the Blue Jays is out here. So it is an honor, sir. Thank you for the time. More importantly, uh, how are things with you, Mike? Things are good, and you you flatter me. I, I appreciate it. it it's, it's no honor. I'm, you know, just a, a broadcaster like you're a broadcaster, or, a, or I'm a former broadcaster now, but uh, do, doing the podcasty thing. Um, uh, I, I do appreciate it, and yeah, I, I'm well aware of, um, you know, how many listeners we had out there in Western Canada. People used to call in and say they, you know, they're, they're on their tractors listening to ball games and uh, what a highlight it is of, of their summer. So always really, really, really appreciative of, uh, of all the great fans out there in, uh, in the prairies. Well, I tell you what, Mike, before we get into the nuts and the bolts of the baseball discussion, and, and Kelly will handle most of that, but you just nailed it. Rems just asked me, how come you love Tom Cheek so much? You're not the biggest baseball guy. And I said, I grew up farming, listening on the radio. Then I went to work at the Weyburn radio station, and I opted the games, and it was Tom Cheek. And the other day, I was on a podcast. The guy said, who is your favorite broadcaster of all time? I said, Tom Cheek. The kid didn't know who he was, Mike. Yeah, have you got a, a, a Tom Cheek story? Like, I never met the man. I wish I had. But what's your best I don't know. There, there are so many. Um, he, you know, I, I only got to work with him for two and a half seasons, um, and then he got sick. But it, they were the most meaningful uh, times in my in my career, and and crazy meaningful in my life. I mean, he had been an idol of mine growing up too. I listened to him. Uh, you know, it, it's it's. It's so weird when people say they've listened to you since they were uh, a kid, but I guess that means, you know, we've been in this business a long time. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was listening to him when I was seven years old on the radio um, doing ball games. So, you know, I'm first time I met him was in 1988 or 89. I can't remember. Um, probably 89 at the X. Um, I had somehow struck up a friendship in the, the press box with a, a man named Les, Len Bramson, um, who created the Blue Jays radio network. And I had no idea who this guy was. He was just nice to me. I was some kid covering uh, the Jays games for a university radio station. He brought me in to meet Tom and Jerry, and that was just a um, crazy moment. And then 13 years later, I'm working with them in the booth. Um, you know, there there are so many... Uh, great cheek stories he he had that big booming voice uh, that that uh, so many of us remember so well and i remember when i brought my uh daughter in to the booth to look around to meet him she was a year old um maybe maybe one and a half i guess and he got up out of his chair and a huge smile and a big hello. And he just scared the crap out of her because <laughs> he, you know, he's, he was huge. He's a big, tall guy and that huge voice. And she just ran screaming and, and uh, uh, cried for a while. That was uh, that was something, but you know, I loved his, his, he, he, his musicality. He loved all these great old forties and fifties songs. And, and I could, you know, see him and hear him before the game and he would just start singing uh king of the road um <laughs> and uh, just out of nowhere but uh, one thing that you know a great story for me was that he i mean he was always such a great champion of mine and a, and a huge mentor and 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 um uh he he enjoyed the fact that i was sort of into um, prospecting and, and looking at minor league systems and knowing who the young players were. That there was something that, you know, not even 20 years ago, people weren't really terribly interested in. It's, it's crazy now the the level of prospect porn that, that people get into. But back then it was a, it was a weird thing. And um, he, he used to just try to, he talked to me about young kids coming up and, and all that stuff. 
And then one day we were talking on the pregame show uh, on the air, and he just um, said, so what do you think of, of this Jose Jimenez kid? And at the time, there wasn't anyone named Jose Jimenez playing in the major leagues. Uh, there was a, a there was a young guy in I think the Rockies or the Cardinal system named Jose Jimenez, but I thought he couldn't possibly be asking about that. Like, why would he even be remotely interested in someone like that? And as those thoughts were going through my head, I looked at his face and he just started to crack a smile that he couldn't contain anymore. And I said to him, "You just made that up, didn't you?" And he started <laughs> laughing. So yeah, he was trying to catch me uh, with some minor leaguer who didn't exist. Hey, I got more, but I know Kelly's just itching to ask you. I would think. Well, no, I some my, pretty hardcore I, ball I, talk. Well, I'm not gonna lie. When I when I saw the itinerary that that I was gonna get an opportunity to run a few ideas or some questions by, I got pretty excited because I'm a huge Jays guy. It's just an observation. I'd be curious for you to weigh in. But as a kid growing up, you know, I remember, you know, you kind of have certain eras where and you remember the 80s with, you know, Dave Steeb and Bell and Mosby and Barfield. And then you kind of a few more years and then there's Alomar and Fernandez and Olerud and, you know, and then a few more There you years. go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right there. I love those three guys. Probably my favorite outfield. And then, you know. And then recently, you know, you got Tulowitzki and Donaldson, and, and you remember that because of the run they had here just a few years back. But I truly think that when we look 15, 20 years from now, there's a very good chance that we're on the start of something special here. Well, we'll say, do you remember way back when we had Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette and Alec Manoa and... I think this group has a chance to sort of do something pretty special that we'll remember years from now. What say you? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And, and it's, you know, we, when you talk about those eras, the, the Bell Mosby Barfield era and, um, you know, th those Dave Steve teams, um, we remember them because they were the beginning and they won, right? They, they won the, the division, they were in the playoffs, they had that great year in 87, they went to the playoffs in 89, but they were already starting to be broken up uh, then and then you remember obviously the World Series teams, um, but between the World Series teams in 2015 with the Donaldson, Bautista, and Carnacion group, um, two of the best players in Blue Jays history played uh, in Roy Halladay and Carlos Delgado, and you you know you could argue that they were the two best players in Blue Jays history as far as long term Jays go, but they'll never be remembered. Hmm the same way as we remember guys who were on the teams that won because through no fault of their own, Halliday and Delgado were never a part of a playoff team, were never a part of a really a team that, that made a serious, serious run. This group uh, is going to be together for a while. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has um, is, is fulfilling all the, the scouts dreams uh, that we had heard back when he was 16. Bo Bichette, um, they're you know there's such such talent on this team, and they're going to be together for a while, and they're going to win a few things. Now, are they going to win a World Series? Who knows? Um, there, there's a lot of luck that works into that. Will they be in the playoffs multiple times? Probably, and that's what gets you remembered, uh, especially when you become a great player. So yeah, um, you know if if the world's still spinning in in 25 30 years. Absolutely, people are going to look back at this Blue Jays team uh, starting in 2020 or starting this year or starting the, the first time that they you know, win a playoff round. Um, and uh, and it, there'll be just as, as great memories for them as there are for all those other great eras. And, and this, is, this is a special group. Uh, and and it's, it's still a work in progress. There are still things that are going to change and things that are going to be added to it. Uh, they're not where they want to be quite yet. Well, they're not where they're going to be quite yet. But I think they're where they want to be right now, uh, working their way towards a, a peak that's probably two or three years down the road. We got five minutes left, Rems. So what else you got? Well, I so Mike, my observation, and I'm I'm speaking purely as a fan. I'm not there every day. I don't follow it as closely as you, although I probably follow it you know closer than most. 
But my observation coming into the year, when you start looking down the roster, you know there's going to be ups and downs because they're such a young team. But I was pretty confident that they would score some runs. Uh, struggled early, but now you're, we're starting to see that. But what I didn't see coming, quite frankly, was the, the, the pitching, especially the bullpen. Yeah, there's been a few snags here and there. Tyler Chatwood with, you know, uh, Delise uh, with a questionable performance here. A couple, but by and large, um, don't you think that the bullpen has far exceeded any expectations that, that any reasonable baseball mind would, would have had coming into the season? Yes and no. I think that, you know, the, the bullpen was um, seen as a weak spot, but what I looked at in spring training, I really liked, um, but that was in spring training when you had Kirby Yates and David Phelps uh, to go with Romano and Dolis, what you hoped you would get from Julian Merriweather. Um, you know, I, I talk about this on my podcast that's, by the way, weekly and going to drop uh, probably within the hour. Um, about the fact that I think there's only two pitchers in the Blue Jays' bullpen this season who haven't been on the injured list at, at one point in time or another. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, they're overworked, but and uh, they were getting some really great stuff from guys like Joel Piamps and Travis Bergen and uh, Anthony Castro, who were all you know freely available for nothing to anybody in the offseason. So that wasn't going to last you had to imagine uh, they were going to fall back down to earth and now they're they're in a little bit of trouble because tyler chatwood is um in this slump where he's walked more guys in his last three outings than he had in his first 16 all season uh, almost twice as many and uh romano and delisa are really your only reliable relievers right now but the beautiful thing is the starting pitching is starting to reliably go six plus uh, last night, Manoa aside, but I think the starting rotation over the last two weeks has an ERA under 250. Mm -hmm. um, so that's helping out this bullpen. All these off days are helping out the bullpen as well. Um, I think I think the cracks are going to continue to show as the the season progresses because you can only ask so much of of Piamps and Castro. Uh, Carl Edwards Jr. hopefully will help. He's had a very up and down career, but they're really missing Phelps. They're really missing Merriweather and they're really missing Barucky. And they, you know, might have to go outside the organization to, to, to fill those holes. Mike, we have less than a minute, but can I just say uh, Weyburn Radio carried Jays talk after the Jays game for years. And I just loved, loved from one broadcaster to another, you peaking on the caller's particularly in those years where the Jays really sucked. Like, you let it rock, man. I know the loneliest job in the world is doing a call-in show for a bad sports team. What do you remember about yeah, that Yeah, but you know what? Mm. It, it, it's funny because people, know, you know you know this, people don't call in post-game radio to talk about how good things are, right? So the, <laughs> the, the worse things are going, the more calls you get and, and the better back and forth there is. But I was always... Um, you know, early, it was imprinted on me early in my radio career. I heard a few people taking calls and, and a caller would just call in with this uh, thesis statement that was utterly ridiculous and that had no basis in fact. And the host would just go, uh-huh, and let them continue to make their point. And I thought, I'm never going to do that. If, 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 you know, back when I started doing that show in 2002, uh, truth actually mattered. It matters a lot less now uh, than, than it used to. Um, but, but I, I said, look, you have the right to your opinion. You don't have the right to your own facts. And I don't know if that would hold up as well in 2021 as it did in the first decade of the two thousands. But I made sure that, uh, if people were going to be angry about something that they, they had to actually know what they were angry about and be able to explain things as opposed to just flying off the handle at the, some random thing that they misconstrued or didn't understand. So um, you know, passion is the enemy of reason and you're dealing with passion when you're dealing with post game calls. But I just tried to, to keep things true. Uh, and apparently that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Well, it didn't with me. It translated to a lot of entertainment. So I just want to tell you a big fan of 20 years here. And I was, is a, th it was a real, uh, pleasure to, to chat with you today. Mike, thanks for this, man. Enjoy the rest of this Jay season. Hopefully we can do it again. 
Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Thanks so much for having me. All right, Mike Wilner out of Toronto, longtime Blue Jays broadcaster, now the Toronto Star. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.